Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Robert Reyna at Photography with an F. You know, one of the main questions that I got back on my what's after my what's in my camera bag is if I have a DSLR, what are some of the things that you would recommend to kind of start off with? Some of the bare necessities in your recommendation. So, <clears throat> my recommendation is, you know, if you're using a full sensor camera or full frame camera or a crop sensor camera you know you're gonna every almost every lens that you buy unless you get into the full sensors you're gonna get kind of what they call a starter lens and not that there's anything wrong with the starter lens but you're really never gonna get the um, the crispy crisp pictures that you would get with a prime lens for an example um, a lot of the um, higher end lenses have the um, metal backings, lower apertures. When you get into the cheaper lenses, um, they have more of the plastic, higher aperture, apertures, which obviously are not going to allow as much light to come into the lens. So they're not going to take great pictures at night. Now, granted, you can move your ISOs up and things like that to adjust for it um, but obviously the higher the ISO or ISO the um, more um, worse the picture is going to look so if you can keep the the ISO down to two three four five six hundred and have a lens that allows you to have a 1.8 or even a 1.4 or, or even some lenses that are 1.2 um, you're going to be able to get be able to work with you know very minimal light um, you're also going to be able to shoot a, an image and get a great background bouquet um, so it's just going to make your pictures crispier um, but my main thing that I would always recommend to most people that are starting out would be a prime 50 millimeter um, this is a 50 millimeter 1.8 Canon lens it, it's about a hundred dollar lens on, on Amazon um, this has autofocus and manual focus. You know, the benefit to starting out with a lens like this is A, you can get that great bouquet. Um, it allows a lot of light to come through that lens. Um, it has a 1.8, so when you take a picture of a person, a portrait, you can really get a, a, a nice um, background blur. Um, so that's the beauty of using a lens like this and like I said it only runs about a hundred dollars and listen you can spend uh, upwards of you know two thousand dollars for the Canon L lens if not higher and of course you can buy all these things used you don't have to buy brand new um, and that's really where you can save a lot of your money so definitely recommend a 50 millimeter to start out with it's really going to help you with the composition um, really make you really think about the shots you take uh, because it is a prime lens it's fixed at a 50 millimeter so if you want to do a headshot you're going to be up obviously closer if you're going to do more of a shoulder a little further back if you want more of a waist up further back than that and of course you want a full body shot you're going to be even further than that so obviously when you're out taking photographs of either landscapings or you know you're downtown taking some pictures of some some buildings it's really going to make you think about the shot before you actually take it which in return will help you when you end up spending more money on some other prime lenses that are, you know, give you better focus, like one that's a 70 to 200. Um, so definitely $100. Again, you can spend a lot more than that, but you don't really need to. This is a great lens for 100 bucks. The next thing that I would recommend for any of your lenses is a um, polarized filter. The reason I would recommend a polarized filter is that it's going to allow you to put them on a lens and and if it's really bright outside it's going to help you really make colors pop so like blues would be bluer um, greens would be greener reds would be redder uh, without the glare into your lens um, it also helps you see through water much clearer and if you're doing any time-lapse um, photographs it actually like especially a waterfall you can actually get more of a milky look to the water where it almost looks like it's standing still so you know these things guys honestly you can spend between I think $16 on um, 
on Amazon up to probably fifty dollars on Amazon if you go to a camera store you can spend upwards of a hundred bucks for some of these um, you know and of course there's even higher ones than that but I think if you spend between thirty to forty dollars as a starter one I think you can and play with it I think you'll learn quite a bit in how to use it um, it's pretty easy to learn it but again it's just a matter of um, getting one but I definitely would recommend a polarized filter for all your lenses unless you're going to be taking pictures inside um, the next thing I would definitely recommend when you get this is obviously you want to get an extra battery you never know how long your battery is going to last especially if you're doing videoing or taking a lot of pictures so it's always good to have an extra battery in your in your camera bag I also recommend depending on the camera that you're using um, some are going to come with SD cards and some are going to come with basically uh, CF cards so each cameras some cameras are going to have two of these some cameras are going to allow this and this um, most of my cameras only allow one or the other um, but I definitely recommend you have at least one in your camera and one in your camera bag you never know if one goes bad on you in the middle of a photo shoot or if you're out and on vacation it's always nice to have an extra one and they're not that expensive you know 8 gig 16 gig 32 gig whatever you feel comfortable doing um, I just think it's a great investment as a you know you should at least have an extra one as you go another thing I would recommend is you get a shutter release it doesn't have to be as fancy as this what these are good for is time lapse you can actually set up the time so the camera will take a picture every five seconds every two seconds every one second um, it also helps you plug it into the camera instead of touching the shutter there where you can get some camera shake you can actually push this button here and it'll actually take the picture for you it works great for night photography and um, also for long exposures um, so you can do a lot of things with this so I definitely would recommend one of these I bought this also on Amazon probably spent either it was either $19.99 or $29.99 so very low expensive um, price product but again you can play around with different pictures and really get creative with it the next thing I would recommend is definitely getting the off-camera flash a lot of the less expensive cameras do come with their own flashes but you'll never get the same kind of flash that you will with a flash like this this one I bought also on Amazon I think I paid $79.99 um, you can have it on a camera stand which I use a lot for portraits outside if you have a chance to look at what's in my camera bag I'll explain that in full detail this also comes with um, um, triggers that you can put onto your camera so when you push the button it actually makes this go off um, but you can really get some creative photos with this so I definitely would recommend you invest at least into one flash until you actually um, get used to using it obviously obviously using this and using this the next thing you're going to need is a trusty tripod um, you don't need to spend thousands or even hundreds of dollars on them I think if you spend a bit about 150 bucks you can get a really nice one this is a very nice compact one um, opens up you can really flatten it down um, this comes up you have an adjustable head on it so you can get some creative shots however you want it again it com it's very compact um, it's made of a strong metal there's definitely some out of graphite out there um, they're obviously a lot more expensive and a lot lighter than this, but this seems to work for me very well. So I love this thing. The next thing I, I would also recommend is a monopod. This I bought on Amazon, as you can see. I think I paid $19.99 or, yeah, about $19.99. Um, it's a great little portable thing. You can stick your camera there. Um, <coughs> excuse me helps you you know hold your camera in place so it doesn't have any camera shake um, a lot of these more expensive lenses as you start investing into don't have um, stabilization like this camera if you look at this lens here this has a stabilization on the lens so you actually don't have to worry so much about the camera shake this actually helps keep the picture more still where this one doesn't not that you need it on a 50 millimeter but as you start purchasing better glass you're going to realize that a lot of the better ones especially that are fixed focal lengths don't have stabilization on them so this kind of helps you stable the camera and obviously if you get into buying the 200 to um, 
or the 70 to 200. It's a much bigger lens. It's very heavy. So this is, helps you take a lot of the weight off your shoulders and your back. Um, so definitely would recommend one of these. It's a, like I said, a, I think $19.99 on Amazon. Very inexpensive investment. Definitely recommend it. Another thing I always like to bring up is that these are not always going to be starter cameras for most people. Um, you know, the 70D is what I'm using to videotape this right now. Um, this is a much older um, crop sensor camera. It's a 50D, and this is a full sensor camera. Um, the biggest difference, obviously, is by the sensor. Um, this is going to allow a lot more light, um, lower ice or higher ISOs, so you can take better photographs at night compared to this one. It's a great camera. It's a much older camera, but again, with great glass, this takes great pictures as well. The main thing I wanted to show you is that when you look at this camera here and you look at this one here you have the red dot and the yellow dot or the white dot and here you only have a red dot and when you look at this one which is a little less expensive lens this only fits this camera it has a white dot here has a white dot there it's going to fit this camera very easily this one you'll notice has the red dot this one here is obviously going to fit this one. You just line it up and it fits just like that. I'm going to release it. The benefit to having this one is that this one will also fit this one. The reason I bring that up is that as you start purchasing lenses, especially if you buy them used, it's really important that you buy a lens that will work on you know crop sensor and a full sensor camera um, because as you eventually you will upgrade probably to a full sensor camera so you want to be able to use the lenses that you already purchased um, so very important part of knowing what you're purchasing so you're not wasting money and having to go out and buy a bunch of new lenses okay so I just wanted to point that out to some people that are just kind of starting out um, pretty much that's really all you need to go out and start having fun and taking great pictures. Um, very minimal things you need. You don't need two cameras. You don't need a 50D. I think that if you invest the money into better glass, you can get some great photographs. Um, you know, the nice, the bigger, nicer cameras, of course, they're nice. They're great, but they're not a necessity. In my opinion, glass is really where the photographs are going to be in creativity. Being creative. And your images and how you're going to take the picture speaks a lot more to people than what kind of camera you're using um, but these are just basic things that I think will help you do a better job and be more creative um, and that's just my opinion so if you have any other questions please leave them below uh, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and I appreciate your time thanks a lot